total commitment getting across what you wanted to say. But it, it just comes from the creative spark, really. That family of storytellers. You're supposed to join the family, become part of it. That's why I took up the guitar in the first place. <laughs> Stacy Lane Wilson here for TV Wire on the red carpet that leads to the after party of the premiere of It Might Get Loud, a documentary film by Davis Guggenheim, which is a love letter to the electric guitar as written by Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin, Jack White of the White Stripes, and The Edge from U2. Check out our interviews. that have no idea what this movie is about. Say if they liked music and they want to dig a little deeper, it might be worth uh, checking it out. You know, I don't think you have to be a musician or even a guitar player to, to get something out of the film. Uh, music's enough, I think. You know. Just so happens that the instruments are there as well, so who knows? I plan to trick both of these guys into teaching me all their tricks. It's going to be very interesting. Uh, I guess it'll be what we played and what turned us on is pretty similar in all of us really. It's just that we might have had slightly different musical genres that hit us but nevertheless it's, it's that enticement into it and that, that commitment to want to play and be part of music. I think, for me anyway. Yeah, it's, you know, I mean there's so much to, I, mean, you, I could sit for hours talking about what we learned, you know, I mean especially with the little tiny things that I won't tell anybody about, you know, they're just for me and I think each one of us has those, I mean, but that, that, that it was incredible moments. In the beginning, you said you were going to steal some secrets. Did that happen? Of course, of course. <laughs> Those yes. are the things I can't tell you about. When the three of us get together, what's going to happen? Probably a fist fight. This is the hall where Levy Breaks was recorded. This brings back some memories. Watched the movie with rapt attention. I don't think I even blinked. But did you not mention Les Paul in the movie about the electric? Lady? Well, there's so many people we didn't mention. You know, we didn't mention uh, um, all these different innovators and Les Paul should be big. We did not want to make the encyclopedia of the electric guitar. We did not want to make the accurate film. And you know, I think if you try to make the accurate film, you got to cover every album, you got to cover every contribution, you got to list everybody, and you got to speak to everybody, and rock historians and critics. We didn't want to make that movie. Jimmy Page tells Jimmy Page's story. And if he talked about Les Paul, maybe we'd go to Les Paul. But you know, it's a very visceral, emotional, intimate movie. And, uh, and very specific, very narrow in its scope, but also hopefully very intense and potent. Well, we didn't, did we? I, I, I'm sure I did. I'm sure I did within the, uh, within the amount of time that I was speaking off camera. You know, we were talking about the fact that that's how Davis kicked it off. I, I did mention those for sure, but no, it wasn't. There's a lot of things that weren't actually in there. A lot, lots of things that shouldn't have been in there that were, but that's it. It's a documentary, you know. You sort of, you lay, you, you, you know, you open your, your heart up to this sort of thing, and you know, you lay there naked, hoping to be clothed. <laughs> um, the bravery of these three people to be so honest and to really talk about what it means to be an artist and to reveal themselves and in ways that I think is, is rare for musicians and, and artists of any kind. Um, and they're just all so hot. <laughs> I just can't say that enough. When you see the movie, I mean, you just will... Have you seen it? Oh, God. So hot. Yeah. I think it'll be inspiring for, for artists, really, because the reason why they're hot is because they're brave and they're willing to put it all out there. Uh, I'm a fan of music, so uh, this movie just sounded like uh, something I'd love, and it was much. It was it was better than I ever thought it would be. It's unbelievable, okay. brilliant film. What, what, what's your feelings on Jimmy Page and Jack? How have they influenced your your life in general? Well, it's sort of like oxygen. You know what I mean? Like when you're a kid, you grew up, you have that kind of music. It just sort of becomes part of who you are. I can't imagine not having it. It's like all the only thing I know is that music. You know, in my life, like kind of all of us. So it's just, uh, it's an amazing thing to watch the process. If I play a really old guitars, plastic guitars, the neck's a little bit bent and it's a little bit out of tune, and I want it to be a struggle. This instrument was just calling out to me. 20 minutes in this store just to find the sound of the band. We're all attempting to share something with another human being. 
Every night that we went on stage, it was living, totally living. Can you tell us about the solo album? It's part of me? The solo album. I don't know where that got started. <laughs> I mean, you know. Well, I'm doing, working with the Dead Weather, who just walked by here. You know, we're, we're just uh, we're going on tour right now. That album's coming out in a few weeks, so I'm I'm, I'm doing that for a little while. And then also, I'm just producing Seven Inches at my new studio in Nashville. Jack, so. was it all that you thought it would be going into it? Did you have you know preconceived kind of ideas? And yeah. And then coming out of it, I mean, was it everything you thought it would be? Yeah, it's great. It's tough yeah. to listen to your own voice over and over again. You know, I wanted to plug my ears a little bit, but you know, it's uh, you get through it. It's easier when I have some uh, instrument to hide behind. You know. Jimmy and I saw. Um, Jack play with his new band Dead Weather the other night here at the Roxy. Really small venue, you know, several hundred people. And he was, and he was, come on, you want to do this, Leslie? Yeah. All right, well, so, um, and he was just playing with his new band and it was like hard and it was potent and it was powerful. And I was like, my God, this is what, this is why I made this movie because Jack is still making new music and still pushing really hard and never settling and I go that's what I'm taking away like as a filmmaker and I think anyone who, who creates something is like never settle never think oh I'm satisfied and know what I'm doing I grew up but, in that. hi how are you oh, so I like your blue hair oh, thank you so much and I love your purple hair. thank you <laughs> so I saw the movie the other day and I oh, thought it was absolutely fantastic I've been a long time fan of Jimmy Page who's usually is so elusive so how did you guys get he is a little famous for uh, ducking the press, you know, ever since the 70s. And when we were all sitting around trying to figure out who, who would be the three perfect icons in this movie, because we didn't want to say the three all-time best guitarists ever, or the three best rock guitarists, or the three best this. And so, you know, Jimmy Page pretty much came to mind. And then everyone was like, he'll never do it, he'll never do it. And then we'd talk for another hour, and then... Um, Jimmy Page would come up again. It was like, he'll never do it, he'll never do it. And then finally Davis and I was like, well, let's just ask. You know, it's not, can't hurt, and we'll just ask. And uh, Peter Afterman, our music supervisor, who's also a producer, set up a meeting with his manager, and Davis flew to New York, and had a meeting, half hour meeting, and they said, great. And they left the meeting, it was like, great? They said, great? And then, and then we met with Jimmy, Davis met with Jimmy, asked him to do it, and he was extremely open and generous and wonderful and really showed some other sides of him. He's, you could probably tell in the film he's incredibly charming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The old or the young? Uh, if you're young in heart, it doesn't matter how old you are. I don't think, I think that's the key to that one. Doesn't make any difference. Yeah. Uh, over the years, how has the business changed, the actual business of making movie, of making music? Make, how's it changed, making music? A lot. Well, well um, you mean as far as being in a group or whatever? I mean, I think, it was, I think it's very tricky now for, for new groups. And uh, uh, as far as the actual making of the music, I mean, the process is, is still the same, really. The technology? Uh, no, the technology isn't, but the actual initial spark that, that, that one minute you're playing the guitar and you're just you know practicing a few chords and, and just within a split second there's an idea coming through which you can develop into a, a song or a number. I mean this is for riff bass. You know. Just comes from a, the creative spark really. Now, so. How did you decide about some of the more fanciful parts for Jack White like the, the young Jack White and the cartoon aspect of his portion? Well the young Jack White that is Jack White Thanks. and that was his idea and, and we got to see him at nine so why not shoot it? And then the, cart the animated stuff is, you know, there's just certain things we didn't have photographs of. You know, Jack told the story of sleeping. He had a, s a bedroom that was seven by seven, and there was no, there were, he had two drum sets, there was nowhere to sleep, and pushed out the bed, and he slept on a piece of foam. And I was like, well, that's a great story, but there's no photograph, so why not animate it? Jack White was, I actually suggested Jack White, and at first we were like, that's, yeah, I was like, I, I, gotta, I gotta mention that, because he's, with, with, with Jimmy here and Jack here and then Edge in the middle and the three generations, it just seemed perfect. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs>